It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports with Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. We're featuring the Columbia River today, starting with Fall Kings in the Dalles area. Then we hook up with the pros at Max Lure for some walleye action out of Umatilla, Oregon. Now, it's time to go fishing. Presented by your Inland Northwest Toyota dealers and the Fishing Hole and Sports Shop. Fish on! Woo! Oh, we're running. Yep. Yeah, fish in the mouth of the Deschutes with Walleye Willie at Ed Iman's Fish Camp. I guess that uh, Procure Bait Enhancement enhance works. I guess it works. worked, eh? Good. Yeah, this is a nice fish. It is giving me several good runs. No, don't go by those guys. So we're using eggs, hover fishing, and I also put a heavy bead, a soft heavy bead with the scent, put that above the hook. I see color. Nice first fish. Woo. Look at that guy. Thank you, Willie. You bet. And there hey, he goes in the boat. Right up. Check it out, everyone. There's your heavy bead. Soft scented bead and then eggs. And that fish swallowed Boy. this. It's way Look how down deep there. that sucker is. He just engulfed it. I can't even get a hold of it. It's that deep. Yeah, it looks like a sound. I'd like to know why Willie is out fishing us like four or five to one. It keeps going up under the dash there. I think he might have some kind of super secret something. Woo! Nice. <laughs> Boy, that's a beautiful fish, Willie. Thank you. Three times. Four times. All right, here he goes. Wow. Oh, look, that's such a go. I'm going to show you the technique we've been using today with Walleye Willie. We're off the mouth of the Deschutes on the Columbia River. We are hover fishing for Chinook salmon, basically drifting. Uh, bait off the bottom. We've got a sliding two ounce weight. Then we've got four feet of 30 pound leader that goes to a three yacht hook. We're using eggs. We're also using Procure's bait enhan enhancer. Aaron's got a sturgeon. <laughs> How many sturgeon can we catch in one day? How big? I was saying six or seven and Willie says bigger than that. Good. He's just like, no, no. Oh, no. Maybe the line or the hook, it was just boing instantly. Yeah. All right. 
Thanks for a great morning of fishing, Willie. Uh, we caught ourselves a couple limits of kings uh, from the mouth of the Deschutes. We're gonna get them filleted up and get back to camp. You bet, Aaron. Thanks for coming out. Anytime you guys wanna come, catch some fish, just give me a call. Going back to the head of the line, queuing up for another drift. You know, those Maruto hooks really work. I like them. Sounds like a TV commercial to me. <laughs> Steve of Angler Innovation with the first Chinook of the morning. <laughs> oh, that felt good. That's a sturgeon. Dave, you're up the road again. You got one on there, Mike? Oh man, it's a nice fish. <laughs> Fishing out here today with Dave and Ng and his wife. And uh, lighting it up. Wow. Look at that fish go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Boy, he took a good run there. He took a great run. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a fish. Oh, that's what we come out here for, isn't it? Yes, it is. Boom! Boom, chakalaka! Yeah! Ooh. Thank you, David. You're welcome. <laughs> Look at this fish, guys. <laughs> Columbia River, Fall Chinook. Come and get them. Look at that. after this word from our sponsors. This is my first time fishing with a cousin's rod and certainly tell they're well made. Real sensitive. It's a nice rod. And I'm not saying that because I'm on a boat full of cousin's rods, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like this fish, I'll tell you. Oh yeah, he looks like a got some meat. job. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice work, buddy. That's a, yeah. that's a good one there. Yeah. <laughs> Northwest Fishing Reports. <laughs> We're cutting the rods out here. 
Hey man, thanks Woo, a lot, guys. Good job. Got me right on it. Look at that thing. That's a stud. It's mm -hmm. one of the bigger ones I've seen today for sure. Hatchery. And a hatchery fish. And I felt like they had comp no doubt about it with the gear we got on here. The tank was pretty subtle. It was kind of a, a dink dink and then a steadier pull. It wasn't I, subtle. I saw that either. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong, right. Miller. Gave a good bite. I didn't have to uh, to guess. I knew it was there. So. Solid hook set. Yep. Solid fight. Done right. Yep. It's tips and trips. New techniques and locations to expand your fishing horizons. It's gonna pack in oil. You know, it's easy to store in your boat. You don't have to take a cooler. You throw a bunch of cans of tuna in your boat and you're good to go. Um, but there are some things that you can do to make it even better, you know, and, and have different variety. But just this plain canned tuna, if that's all you have, wrap that on your plugs and it'll, and it'll work. It's a major part of what I do. So basically, if I was in my boat, I'd, I'd open that can of tuna and I'd just drain the oil off right over the side. Uh, a lot of guys will keep it you know, add it in, you know, so they can add it in other stuff, but I'm not really concerned about that. It has so much oil in it that I'm just gonna get rid of it so that things are a little cleaner. The biggest thing here is you gotta get all this stuff right centered on the plug. Um, you can't have it lopped off to the side, one side or the other, you won't be able to get the plug to run true. But so the first thing you do, and if you drain this off, it uh, isn't so gooey, but. So basically you just dig into the can of tuna, get a chunk of it out, lay it on the belly of your plug, take your stretchy thread, and just start. First thing I like to do is I just slowly wrap it. I'm trying to center it. Just trying to get that plug centered up, or that wrap centered up on the plug. And then as it gets tight, you know, as I feel like it's not gonna move, then I crank it down. And I just wrap, I just, I wrap the, the heck out of it. Lash it all down, and then you flip your hook back over. And on these, on these plugs, you go ahead and wrap a little bit in front of the, the belly hook as well. Kind of center that on there, and then you just repeat the same process. Up the plug, try to make sure, at this stage, you can kind of push stuff around. Then just kind of tighten everything down nice and tight. And just tie a couple half hitches, and that's good to go. Northwest Fishing Reports, brought to you in part by the support of these fine sponsors. Let's get back into the action. Yeah, it caught fish, that's for sure. Walleye fishing on Umatilla, let's go get them. Channeling my inner walleye. Trying to be one. One with the walleye. One with the walleye. Lance, I'm guessing you got some max lures on that uh, stringer there? Uh, we got max galore. <laughs> All right. uh, this is basically a double whammy walleye that Ted has doctored up. He's got a uh, orange bead in between that crawler harness and you know, the orange and black works really well, and then this UV glow smile blade is absolutely fantastic for any type of fishing that you're doing. Um, it really puts off a lot of UV, and uh, when the sun is shining, it gives off all the colors of the rainbow. It's absolutely phenomenal in any type of fishing that you're doing. This uh, particular setup imitates perch colors. These walleye in here are feeding on perch right now, so. That's why we're putting this on Robbie so he can catch the big fish. Hi everyone, Mike Carey with Northwest Fishing Reports. We're on the Columbia River today below the town of Plymouth. We are guests fishing with Ted Beach. How you doing folks? 
and Lance Mers of Max Lure. We are waiting for the walleye bite to start. It's a beautiful morning out here. The wind is calm. We're not getting rained on. Let's go fishing. Robbie just missed the first fish of the day and it's easy to do with walleye if you're not used to fishing them. Um, Ted, you were mentioning a technique to improve your hookup success. Sure. What happens is when a walleye takes the bait, he sucks that bait in, expels the water through his gills. And if you jerk on that hook, as soon as you feel that bite like you would salmon, steelhead, or bass, you're jerking that hook right out of his mouth. So what you want to do is we call it feed the fish. You want to give that fish some line. You can either let line out or just take your rod and tilt it to the back of the boat. When you reach that apex at the back of the boat, instead of jerking, just raise your rod to start reeling. Nine times out of 10, you're going to hook that fish and you'll hook them right in the corner of the mouth where you want. Every fish is a nice fish for me. Well, looking for the little bigger. I think that's the biggest fish of the day there, Robbie. Thank you. <laughs> We're using a super slow death hook today with a max smile blade on it with a couple small beads. I'm going to put the worm on the slow death hook. And one of the tricks I like to use because the worms are so wiggly and hard to get on the hook sometimes is I just take and whack them on the side of the boat. It stuns them. It allows me to put the hook where I want it and just thread it on the uh, super slow death hook. What's the hot lure then, Mike? Help us out a little bit. Ted? Well, Mike, you guys, I'll tell you, as a pro angler, tournament fisherman, I can't give you all my secrets, so you're just gonna have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> You'll figure it out. I think we're loaded up with Max Lure gear on this boat, so I'm sure we'll catch some fish, Mike. See how it goes. All right, good luck with that, Rob. We're gonna head back out to the main Columbia River. We've got some fish in here, but we're looking for bigger ones, so. Follow us. You got it, Mike. Look, we're finding a couple here and there. Uh, but we'll follow you for some more. Fish on. We're below the McNary Dam. Lance and Ted moved this over here and I've got a big walleye. No. No, I don't. <laughs> I got a big sucker. Sucker! Can I see what a sucker looks like next? Keep it? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what a sucker looks like. Good eating. Rubber lips. Not a sucker this time. Good fish, I think. Let's see. Let's see. Tad bigger. Some days you gotta take what the river's gonna give you. We haven't gotten a lot of huge ones yet, but um, these are good eating fish, and we're keeping them. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's in Robbie's line. There we go. Bigger fish. Yep. Nice fish. You got thanks. What color? I just got one on gold. Nice conditions out here. It's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that sunshine this morning though? I don't know about you, Randy, but I'm glad I'm in this boat and not the other one. <laughs> yeah, apparently it has a cover on it. Yeah. Very but well for the camera. Unfortunately, you got to sit back there and uh, steer, but I'm feeling pretty good about this situation. A lot of the walleye anglers like to use these components. 
In this case, this is a crawler harness. And uh, we've got a stack bead on there with some black beads. Orange and black seems to work really well. Uh, you always want to have a variety of components on your boat, especially when you're walleye fishing. Whether it be a crawler harness or a super slow death, you know, our double whammy walleyes work absolutely fantastic, and this is kind of the proof of that. Came back in the sloot, had uh, sent us back here. It was the right move to make. The weather's calming down, we're getting some good fish. Another nice fish using Max components and a UV holographic smile blade. We've had some pretty good action here in the sloop. Let's check in with Rob and Randy and see how they're doing on their boat. Now is that what they call a salmon? What the heck is that hanging out the back of that thing? Does it look bigger? One of the main components when you're walleye fishing, the technique we're using um, are what are called bottom bouncers. And these are the only bottom bouncers I've ever seen in the store, these L-shaped. But Ted, you have a different setup. And I should note, Ted does uh, a lot of walleye tournaments, so little attentions to details <laughs> here. So tell us your system. Okay. I won't give away all my secrets, though, Mike. Ah. Um, what I'm using is what we call a slider bottom bouncer. I have a little black clevis on here that I attach this single lead uh, weight onto. This is a uh, really simple to put on. Just push it on. Now that allows that to slide. And the reason I do that is when I've got fish that are light biting, they're allowed to pick that bait up and swim with it, and the line goes through. They don't feel the weight like they would on the L shape. The L shape bottom bouncer, you'll see I have a chain on here. It's a chain swivel with a dew lock snap on it. These chain swivels, dew locks, all these components are available at Max Lure. In the river system where you got a lot of current, I put a chain on here because when you're using a spinner or smile blade, this keeps your line from twisting. I don't know if you've ever fished in the current with no swivel on, your line starts twisting after a little bit of trolling. This prevents that from happening. The time I would use this L-shaped bottom bouncer is when I've got fish are actively biting and they're aggressive fish. I'm not worried about them feeling the weight. I'll put one of these on. Uh, that's the only difference on them. Rule of thumb is on, on weights, depending on the current also, but the rule of thumb is for every 10 feet, you use one ounce of, of weight. So if you're at 20 feet, you'd use two ounces of bottom bouncer weight. Oh, okay for the novice guys, not the professional anglers like Ted. You know, the cool thing is use whatever weight that's gonna make you feel that bottom consistently. Correct. Right. So, you know, it, as long as you're feeling the bottom, that thing's gonna do its work. And then Ted pointed out earlier, keep that line at a 45 degree angle and you know that that's gonna be working for you. That's the key, keeping the line at a 45 degree angle. I was telling Lance and Mike earlier, I fished down in the lower Columbia around Portland you have a tide down there plus a current. So I'm trolling worm harnesses downstream at three miles, three and a half miles an hour, which is unheard of in a, in a reservoir like Potholes or uh, Moses Lake. Yeah. yeah. All right, good tips. Let's get back to fishing. Absolutely. You guys still catching fish? Wow, nice. 